Welcome back. Today we are diving into the fascinating world of adaptive filters, specifically the least mean squares or LMS filter. Whether you are in communications, signal processing or just curious about how to reduce noise in your signals, this tutorial is for you. Before we jump into the code, let's understand where adaptive filters are used. These filters have a wide range of applications from noise cancellation and echo reduction to system modeling and channel equalization in communication systems. They are also crucial in adaptive beamforming and medical signal processing like ECG and EEG signals. The LMS filter is one of the most popular adaptive algorithm, but what exactly makes it so powerful? Let's break it down. In simple terms, an LMS filter works by adjusting its coefficients or the weights to minimize the error between the desired signal and the actual output of the filter. So in this figure, uh, Xn is the noisy input to the filter. This enters a delay line, very similar structure like an FIR filter. And to each one of these delay lines, a weight is attached, which is going to govern the impulse response of the filter. And these arrows indicate that these weights are adaptive. They are changed as per the characteristics of uh, input signal, as well as what is desired out of this filter. So uh, at uh, time is equal to T naught, the signal is multiplied by first weight, then there's a delay, then the delayed signal is multiplied by the second weight and so on and so forth until all the weights are exhausted. So here we have n weights and we have n taps and after each delay the signal is multiplied by the weight and then it is sent to an adder. So all these taps, all these branches are then added in a summer and that gives you the output of the filter. Yn here denotes the output of the filter. Now this output is compared with the desired signal. So we assume that we have a copy of the desired signal and in most cases we do have. So the error is calculated by subtracting the desired signal from the uh, what is the filter output and an error is generated. Now this error is then finally used to adapt or change these filter weights. And the algorithm which we use specifically to do that is called least mean squares. And uh, going by the equations given here, you can clearly see that the filter output Yn is nothing but a dot product between the weights and the delayed version of the signal. N here notes the number of taps or number of weights in the filter. Essentially this whole thing is uh, nothing but convolution. And then error is calculated by subtracting the desired signal from the actual output of the filter, this one. And then the coefficients are updated and this is the update equation of the coefficients. So the old weight gets uh, added with some number here. We will uh, describe how this equation has been derived. But for uh, the current purpose, you just assume that this is the old weight and a number gets added to it. And that's how a new weight is uh, decided. So uh, here is a visual representation. So let's say that we have a filter having eight weights or eight tap filters. So you see the impulse response of these eight weights of this filter. And we have, a, we have a signal which is having 48 samples. So essentially we are going to just, as part of the convolution, we are going to flip this signal over and then slide this kernel over this uh, flipped signal and implement a sliding window multiplication. That exactly is uh, the convolution. So uh, now I'll switch over uh, and explain this equation, how it has been derived. So now I'll explain uh, these two equations, filter output and the coefficient update. This is quite straightforward. It is just a subtraction between two numbers. So as you can see that, let's start with the first equation, this one. And uh, to do so, I will take the help of these two diagrams. So here is a filter with, which is having, it's an eight tap filter. So this is weight zero, weight one, weight two, weight 3 and so on and so forth till weight 7. And here we have a signal uh, which again starts from let's say x is equal to 0, x is equal to 1 and it goes up to x is equal to 48. So so we have a filter which is 8 tap and we have a signal sample which is 48. And uh, what this equation is trying to do, uh, this one, it's pretty simple. What it is doing is it's taking weight 0, weight 0 and multiplying it by flip version of the signal, 48. So when we flip the signal, x, when we look at it from this direction, 48 will come first. Then it is going to take x1, sorry, uh, my apologies. It will take weight 1 and x47. Then it is going to take weight 2 and x46. Then it is going to take weight 3, x46 and so on and so forth until we reach weight 7 and x 40. So this is the first output and this whole process is repeated for all the samples of the signal that is 48. So this whole equation can be written down like this. 
we have a we have a k which is going from 0 to n let's just call it n n is the number of taps in the filter and we have then wk which multiplies by w n minus k so when k is equal to 0 we get w0 x 48 minus 0 so this is w0 x 48 and this is what is given here and so on and so forth when k is equal to 1 this will become 47 which is what is given here and so on and so forth so this equation is simple this is implementing convolution as the filter kernel slides over the signal uh, now come to this coefficient update equation this is a very important one and this comes from uh, least mean square algorithm so as the name suggests least mean square so least and there's something to do with mean and something to do with square and actually what it is doing this is operating on the error signal so let's define the error signal so we had a desired signal and we have a filter output the difference between them is the error now let's come to the squaring part of it this part square so essentially we are doing squaring of this error and if you notice this yn this becomes this and yn is nothing we have already seen yn is nothing but a product between w and x delayed version of x and it has it is a sliding window which is running over the it's a sliding window of length n so i'm just making a short notation here so that uh, it becomes easier to simplify this whole equation essentially i am writing down this equation in a short form and so this is nothing but some kind of a mean of some mean operation happening so w multiplying by uh, delayed version of x and i will call it mean it's a very uh, informal way of working but i'll use it for the purpose of explanation so we can write now this yn as dn minus wx square so square part is over mean part comes from the fact that we are taking a sliding window mean or convolution and now comes the least part so idea here is that we have an error and the only thing that is within our control is how we adapt or change these weights so this is variable and this is what we are uh, supposed to vary so that this error minimizes so to do that we go back to calculus and uh, what we do is we differentiate this error with respect to the weights so what we get is plain and simple so this is what we're talking about so we have this two term this straight away comes down and it becomes uh, it comes here and this results in this term and then we differentiate the inner part so this is a chain rule and when we do that we realize that this is having no component of w so this becomes zero and this w disappears because we are differentiating with respect to the weight so what remains is x so finally we can rewrite this whole equation so the minus comes from here two comes from here and if you see carefully this is nothing but the error itself that's how we had defined the error here this part this is error so this is error itself so this becomes the error and then we have multiplication with x so this is what we call as gradient of the error and uh, what we are supposed to do then is take this gradient and move in a direction by adjusting this weight so that this error becomes as low as possible and that's the reason why then we take we update the weight the next weight with the old weight minus the gradient and the expression here becomes minus 2 into error into x i'm not following the correct mathematical notation for purpose of simplicity but I'll, i'm just saying how this whole equation gets formed and uh, so essentially this is the new weight this is the old weight and this is the change now we do not apply this entire change all at once because the filter becomes unstable so we want filter to change slowly and retain stability so instead of applying this complete error all at once we multiply it by a small number called mu which is also known as learning rate this number is generally a very small number like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 this decides how 
quickly or how slowly this whole filter converges. So how, what we do is that to this component here, we multiply mu. So the equation becomes mu weight, old weight. So these minus minus becomes plus here, two. So we multiply by mu and then we have the error and then we have the signal input to the filter. So you can see how uh, this whole equation has been derived. This is learning rate. This is the error. This is the input to the filter. That is the noisy signal. And sorry, this x. And now if you see this equation, this is exactly what it is saying. So this is the new weight. This is the old weight. This is the learning coefficient or learning rate. This is the error and this, this is the delayed version of the input to the filter or noisy signal. So I hope uh, now you're clear as to how this whole algorithm is working. And once these uh, weights are updated, again, you see here, so in one iteration, all these weights are updated, then this whole cycle is repeated, then again, this uh, entire uh, set of you know, weights are updated in an iterative manner. So we'll implement this entire algorithm in Python and show it to you how it uh, functions.